All right, welcome everyone. Uh, what we're going to do today is work on a transfer or trace monotype, uh, which is a printmaking process uh, that requires drawing uh, to transfer the pigment or the ink and oil paint on the surface of the, the plate here onto a piece of paper. Uh, so some of the materials you'll need, uh, we have uh, oil paint. Uh, this is pretty much student quality oil paint. Uh, you can use more expensive, but uh, there's no reason to do that at this point. Uh, we'll need a, a brayer. Uh, this is my speedball. I've got a piece of plexiglass. Uh, I have a palette knife here just in case, but I don't usually need it. Uh, I've got some Grumbacher odorless mineral spirits, uh, but I also recommend Gamsol. And then I've got a, an airtight can or container to, to put that in. Uh, I've got a rubber glove. Uh, for when I'm cleaning up uh, so I don't get any of the, the thinner on me. Uh, and then we need a piece of printmaking paper. Uh, so this is Reeves BFK. Uh, it's a gray tone, but they, they come in white, tan. Uh, it's a soft surface paper, uh, so it'll take an impression from an etching press. Really, really great. Uh, in this particular case, you want the softness to help absorb uh, the pigment, the ink. Uh, so a hard surface like smooth bristol wouldn't be a great uh, surface to be working with. Uh, so what we do first is squeeze out a dab of the oil paint. Just right here in the middle. We don't need a lot. Uh, if you put too much down, uh, the printing uh, will go too dark too quick. And run this around a little bit. Uh, something that is beneficial is to put your paper surface under the clean piece of plexi here just to see how big of an area you actually need to work with. And if you find that you need more paint, you can always do that, but this should be good. You want it to kind of just be tacky, not too much, but you also want a, a relatively consistent coat. So I'm just trying to shape that edge a little bit back and forth, back and forth until you're completely coated here. And then make sure that there's a good unified direction and that you haven't uh, created a blot like a, a thick heavy line in there somewhere. Uh, put your brayer out of the way so you don't get your oil paint on you. Uh, get your clean sheet of paper out. Okay, uh, we've got a paper surface that just needs to be wet with a, a little mist. Uh, so I'm going to do this off camera. So I'm not trying to soak it, uh, but you can see that there's a lot of water there. We don't need all that water. So what we do is move this out of the way for the moment and blot this with a paper towel. So you're just removing the excess without scraping across the paper surface, without getting the paper fibers messed up. Just trying to remove all the excess and then you're good. You know, it should still be damp. Um, maybe you hit another spot that is kind of dry. And then repeat that process, dampen that off. So just a little bit, it'll help the paper absorb your ink, and you're good to go. Okay, so transfer method can be any number of uh, utensils or styluses. I'm going to use a, a regular HB pencil. But anywhere that this paper surface touches uh, the, the ink here, it will print. It will transfer to that surface. So we have to be really careful not to draw or push pressure in areas that we don't want it. So one of the first things I'll do here is to create a box, uh, something to draw within. But you know, I've already lost where the edge is, so I'm going to come in here and just lift up that corner, which is totally something you can do 
throughout this process so that you get a good transfer. I'm not using a ruler. Part of this is about creating happy accidents, edges, shapes that are maybe a little bit more expressive and varied than you might get with a, a regular pencil. So you can see already that it's transferring a lot, which is great. We got a good transfer going. Okay, so now we've got to make sure that your hand doesn't touch the surface as much as possible. So in order to create uh, the, the drawing here, I've got a photograph that I'm looking at. Uh, I'll be holding down on the outside here with my hand just to make sure that the paper surface doesn't shift. Uh, but I'm going to just draw straight into this. Uh, this is freehand, so there's going to be areas that are, you know, wrong at the end of the day. But that's okay. Again, part of this is about experimenting and finding things that can give you a new, a new mark, a new way of approaching a drawing. So, if you can't tell already, which is probably pretty likely, I'm doing a portrait. So I'm looking at the, the shape of the hair, how it might curl over the ear. and referencing some landmarks at this point. So forehead starts here, ear I already mentioned is over here. So in avoiding touching the surface, extend my pencil far away from my wrist. Looking at that, looking at angles, because I don't have a drawing down here. Uh, there are going to be things that I have to be really keyed in on and, and aware of what's happening. So when I look at this, I'm looking over here. When I'm looking uh, at the forehead, I'll be looking at the chin, chin to ear, kind of that triangular relationship. Uh, if your paper starts to lift off the surface, it does give you opportunity to bring a little note very lightly down there and it's lifting off because the paper's wet and it's buckling a little bit but the pressure of the pencil will push it back down uh, with no trouble. Just an added benefit here. Uh, but you could certainly take and make your drawing and just trace over it once it's on the ink but again I like that opportunity to to work with no net, apparently, or essentially. We have lots of opportunity to make mistakes here. And that's part of the fun here. So I'm, I'm taking and making some notes here. Eyebrow uh, comes in contact with the space between the eyebrows, this little keystone shape at the top of the nose uh, that gives us a, a nice kind of symmetry relationship. So looking at that, relative to where the chin is. I like that angle still. Uh, I'm not going to drop a line across the jaw because it is such a harsh edge and this is a, a female model. But uh, once I'm happy with where I've placed that, come in there and, and give it a little note. I'm going to come in now and define the rest of the hair around the face as a, as a shape. So big shape, medium shape on this side. We'll get to the neckline and actually that could go over just a little bit. And then there's a there's a necklace hanging in here. Got a rope kind of design that I'll add in a second with a teardrop. Pendant hanging from it. It has some swirls going across it. 
and again a, a rope kind of fashioned metal necklace so give it a little edge and bring the hair over just a little bit more and carry this strand of hair over Again, I was defining the big shapes of the hair got this relationship with the jaw now so I know where the hair can can move away from that volume and form okay that allows me then to more accurately place the shoulder line so then I'm looking at the space around it and I get this nice little gap uh, between the border and the shoulder, so that becomes a more interesting and complex uh, background space. You get the brow pushing out here, back to the eye, looking at the nose, relationship with the ear, pretty much line up. Uh, looking at the chin relative to the nostril here. So I'm just trying to make a couple notes real quick brow line, eyebrow comes out from underneath the hair, yeah I'm, I'm good with that angle, uh, though it's not a finished edge uh, to be sure. Because I'm working without a net, I, I just want to be really careful with all this here. comes back and get the septum shape here wing of the nostril coming around here and I'm trying to think in three dimensions as much as possible the septum shape tucks in up underneath nostril wing curls up and over all right so we're gonna put uh, put this brow in at this point a little darker on the underside I'm gonna start to see what kind of transfer I've got going on okay so it's got a pretty good amount of detail which is great so the amount of ink was just about right so relationship with the nose where that eye sinks back behind it Nice dark for the pupil. The lid is casting the iris and the color to the eye into shadow a bit. Get uh, opportunity to put some lashes in there, not a lot. And a, a little bit of an underplane to that lid. And then just a little bit of uh, the edge there the cheek will pop out behind that nose tuck in here mouth is gonna affect that she's got a little bit of a smile get a little bit of curvature and then back down into the chin which I adjusted a little bit uh, to, to play with what was already happening there and I can, I can then really encourage the rest of the form of the hair uh, that's happening here. And a, lot of, a lot of room for variation and exploration with the hair in terms of how much is too much and how it tapers back in. So play with the rhythms and, and motion that you can find in the hair and, and where it curls back on top of itself 
where you need it to to fade. All right, so getting to the other eye, I've got a nostril I can look at as a reference point. Uh, I've got this eye already as well, so lowest point on this eye relative to the other eye is about right there. Uh, the other corner relative to the hair and the mouth, which I don't have drawn in, but I do have this intersection with the neck and chin, so I'm going to be looking at that as a reference point. So, some lashes, not a lot, upper crease of the eyelid. Uh, I can emphasize the underplane of the eyebrow now at this point. A little dark conclusion in that corner. Lower lid. And iris shape. Get the pupil. The light is coming from the right side. So the iris, the blue part of the eye, is going to be a little brighter on the left side. So let's see how much is transferring. Not bad. We want to darken that down just a bit. Okay, let's come over here to the ear. Throw a little shape or two going on in there. Just every now and then good idea to check to see what's transferring and make sure that what you see on pencil um, is similar to what's happening on the other side. Okay, All right, so shifting to the, the hair again, finding some big rhythms and shapes, twisting my pencil around. There's some light that happens across this space um, that I can make note of real quick, and then I'm going to jump back to the mouth. Okay, so the mouth relative to my other forms. Eye, nose, what's that triangular relationship? Your mouth is a little open. What's the relationship with the ear? I'm going to commit to right there for the corner of the mouth. Filtrum shape coming down from the nose. If I haven't mentioned already, her mouth is open, so there's a little more irregularity to the forms. Back corner is a little lower than the front corner. I'm going to be really sensitive to the teeth in terms of how less, how, how much I can get away with not putting in there uh, where they can still feel like teeth. Just emphasizing a little more dark there, under plane, the lip. We get a nice cast shadow across and around that form, and I'm just going to darken in that as a volume already. So teeth, I'm going to try and describe very minimally, hardly at all. Let's see what's transferring. Okay, so that line's a little dark. Emphasize the others a little bit more. All right, upper upper lip needs to be in shadow because the light's from above. darker. Push up. Essentially it's a core shadow. 
And then the teeth are a cylinder, uh, but they're also all shaded in. So I want them to reside in between the lips. Don't want to do too much there. All right, while I'm shading things in, nostril definitely needs some dark. I just want to see how much pressure is necessary there. Okay, so there, there's a cast shadow from the nose into the filtrum shape, sharp. That's a good amount of pressure, I think. Okay, not bad. So I can keep using that pressure, uh, or you can start to introduce your finger. Push that pressure down, see what's there. Uh, and then an edge if you need to with the pencil. Cast shadow edge. We can get a firm edge with the finger. And every now and then a little thumbnail line can introduce some interest. Just barely did anything. I'm going to push a little bit more pressure there. I'm trying to create an underplane to the nose. Really just push all that in shadow, just a little bit more. More pressure until you see the transfer that you want. So that's good there. Keep pushing. A little darker in here. Okay, good. Light pressure. Cheekbone, nice pressure there. Let's see what transfers, great. Light pressure across here, kind of evenly. And then from the chin back towards the ear, I want to push that jawline in. And then the neck is pushed down. We get a cast shadow here. more pressure. Here can be pushed back a little bit. Uh, there's a cast shadow from the lips. This volume gets pushed back a little bit. Chin has some roundness. Looking pretty good. Push, connect that up. Everything down in here, let's push back a little darker. Bring that Just a little bit of light on the neck, so kind of finesse that a touch. All right, so forehead, we get just a little bit of a connection uh, towards the nose. Not a lot. All right, so I'm gonna move into the hair. I think think about all I want to do in there in the face for the moment. Maybe just a little bit more pressure. So hair, first thing for me is gonna be just a quick adjustment, more or less globally across. Creates a, a shadow tone. It's not too dark, it's not too light. So 
It's moving with the volume of the head. But this whole area is in shadow. So I'm starting by knocking it all back. So I'm moving the hair darker, bringing a lot of pressure to bear uh, so I can get that transfer nice and strong. It's going to chisel out the ear a little bit more here. I'm also looking at the shape of this dark as it separates between, well, we'll call this a mid-tone relative to, to what's transferring. A little bit darker of a mid-tone. But finding the contrast between the darkest part of the pencil and the mid-tone so that it transfers that way on the other side. Like I was saying, this is light down here, so it's casting a bit of a shadow. This whole area is less important uh, compositionally. just needs to not have a lot of attention brought to it at the moment. But you can use other utensils to, to draw with here. It doesn't have to be all about the pencil or your, your finger pressure, uh, but there's definitely something to be said about it connecting to this as a, as a brightness scale uh, that is really useful. Being able to see it go as dark as it's going here and it's pretty close to how it's actually transferring. That, that is supremely helpful. How dark is it? Can go a little bit darker. This is already shaded back a little bit, but definitely is going to go darker in here. I haven't already done a broad coat with a light gray on this side, so I'll do that in some areas now. A little bit gray. Grayer here to chisel out the face from the background a bit. Nice and dark. Uh, this area doesn't have a lot of tone yet, so knock some back in there. We get a little bit of a ribbon effect.
I'm really looking at big picture things that need to change and adjust and how much is necessary. Things like wanting that nose to have just a little bit more contrast, just a little bit. just a, a little variation to an edge. So I'm working on last minute touches just to transition some, some shapes that may have ended kind of abruptly and really create a little bit more brightness range in a few areas. And then it'll be time to, for the, the full reveal. So the background doesn't have a lot uh, to it right now. I'm, I'm just gonna give it a little bit of variation. Kind of push, push the viewer to the, the focal point a little bit. Can be done with the finger or with the pencil. Maybe just a, a little bit more around this shoulder. You know, you can always add more interest in, you know, border, essentially decoration as needed. And uh, as far as a, a signature goes, uh, you'd have to sign it backwards if you want to do it in the print. Uh, so that is totally up to you. Um, so the, the reveal process then here is, is the fun part. So the reveal is pretty much been done at various times but when you fully take it off uh, that's when we get to really assess what's happening and what's working for us um, and you can certainly go back into it more if you like but uh, at a certain point it, it just needs to be done um, so hope you've enjoyed the, the process here a little bit uh, we we have uh, a nice positive print here if you're interested in a negative print like film negative uh, if you look at the leftover ink here. You can see through it a little bit and you can print a negative version of that uh, just like we've done here if you've got a, a blank piece uh, of this paper somewhere. Uh, you put that back down again with, with nothing on it and it, instead of drawing with a pencil we take a wooden spoon and apply pressure here as long as you keep the paper from moving. You get a nice consistent burnished down print of the negative version of this. So that can be an interesting kind of secondary version of what you've just done. Uh, cleanup process, uh, we'll take uh, the mineral spirits here and some paper towel, wipe it off. Uh, make sure you dispose of that uh, in a hazardous waste uh, area in your town. And that's ultimately the end of the process. It's a quick, easy way uh, to get some experimenting done and you can do a, you know half a dozen prints in a couple hours. So thank you for your time. Hope you enjoy the process.